Hi, today we will take a look at the R to R resistor ladder, which is a circuit to convert digital to analog voltage. It's built up from two types of resistors. The one resistor value is R and the second is 2R, which is just twice as big. We can take different values for R like 100 or maybe 1000 ohms. The precision of this analog to digital converter depends on the count of bits. We start from the least significant bit on the left to the highest significant bit to the right. There is one end connected to ground and the other is connected to output. The higher the bit, the higher the influence on the voltage. The lower the value of R is, the higher the current you get out of it. But what's the minimum resistance we can take? One thing to consider is that whenever your bits are not all zero, you have your high bit connected via this resistor ladder somehow to the ground, so it wastes some energy. If you want to limit your power consumption, you rather take higher values for R and connect it to an operational amplifier wired as a voltage follower. But if you want a simple circuit, you just take a look in the datasheet. You get the maximum current for each pin. For this 80 mega it's 40 milliamps. With the Ohm's law we can calculate when we are running the circuit on 5 volts and 40 milliamps then uh, the resistance be between the high pin and the ground has to be at least 125 ohms. When we take a look at our circuit then the the shortest resistance is between the highest significant bit and the output which could be connected to ground somehow. So the lowest value for R would be like 63 ohms. But how can we calculate the voltage we get out of it? The count of bits determines the levels we can get. The count of levels is 2 to the power of bit count. The voltage for each level is the high value of your circuit like 5 volts divided by the 2 to the power of bits times the level. Since we start to count the levels from 0 is the highest voltage you can get out of this circuit, not the high value of your microcontroller. It does look a bit complicated, so let's just try with this example of 2 bits. 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, so we have 4 levels starting at 0 it's 0 up to 3 and then calculating the maximum voltage we get exactly 3.75 volts. But no worries, the more bits you take the closer you get to your 5 volts. Let's take a look on a practical example to wake you up again. So as 1R I take this 100 ohm resistors and as 2R I just saw that two of them in series to get 200 ohms. Let's build up a 4 bit resistor ladder here. We just take this voltage meter and connect the resistors directly to high and low without a microcontroller. Let's check the 16 volt levels that we get out of 4 bits here. I will just connect them manually, so enjoy it in time lapse. Hmm, I'm not sure about the educational value of this example, so let's just connect an Arduino and try some code. The digital output pins 0 to 7 of the Arduino Uno are nicely mapping to the D port of the 80 Mega, so let's use this. In the setup I just set the D port as complete output. We will need all 8 bits later. In the loop we will just increment the D port and wait for a second. Let's check the outcome. One thing I forgot to mention. The first two bits have to be unconnected when you want to program it. Otherwise it will time out. So let's reconnect them and take a look at our voltage meter. 
Nice, it cycles from 0 up to around 4.5 volts. Let's remove the delay to get the maximum frequency there. We want to enjoy how fast this thing is working. To avoid the loop overhead, I just wrap it by an endless loop. Ok, our voltmeter just shows an average value. It's not fast enough. So let's connect the oscilloscope and check what we get. One level change every 300 nanoseconds. That's insane. But you can also see there are some spikes. They are happening when the bits are flipping to zero and the remaining loaded capacity at the pin has to be pulled down to zero also. But at the same time another bit is set to high and charges up. So we get for a few nanoseconds a higher value than we want. But consider this. This digital to analog converter currently runs at about 3 MHz. This is insane. Let's try something completely different. We just take a speaker. So let's just try to output a sine wave. I have calculated this table of values, which represents a complete sine wave in 256 values. So when we take a 8-bit counter, which is here unsigned char, then it will loop the sine wave. Whenever it overflows, it just starts at zero again. So we output on port D the value of the sine table at position I and we increment I afterwards. What differs this time is that this complete sine table covers all eight bits. So the negative one will be zero and the positive one will be 255. So we are covering the complete eight bit level range. Let's try it. So let's connect the speaker that I got from an old chunky telephone. Since we are still working on our 4-bit resistor ladder, we just connect it to the higher significant bits. You could hear like the sound got smoother and smoother when you connected the lower significant bits. Let's check the oscilloscope. Still looking a bit digital, isn't it? But we can recognize the sine wave here. Let's go for the complete 8 bits. Finished is my 8-bit digital to analog converter. So let's plug it in and connect everything again. It is somehow silent now. The cause is that I have used 1000 ohms for R and 2000 for 2R. I didn't have any lower matching values. So now we don't get much current out of it. But it's also more power conserving. Let's connect it to the oscilloscope. It's looking much smoother now. But when we zoom in we can still see the steps and the spikes. And since we are driving the speaker the voltage also did drop. So what you have to do when you are using higher resistor values is to connect the operational amplifier as a voltage follower, like I did also in the last video. If you didn't notice it's louder now. 
Let's check the output on the oscilloscope. The sine wave does really look good. The op amp also filtered the spikes, but the trade-off is that we can't get 3 MHz out of it now, since the op amp is just following slowly. Let's disconnect from the lower significant bits and see how much bits do we need to even notice a difference. I think 5 bits are enough for this speaker. When we just leave the highest significant bit connected, we get a clean square wave. Let's get to the conclusion. We have some advantages and some disadvantages. This digital to analog converter is super fast. You have seen it, 3 MHz. It's built from two kind of resistors only. No active components are needed unless you want to have high resistance here. The code is simple as it can get. No timing needed. You just write the value to your port. The resolution is arbitrary. You are just limited by the pin count of your microcontroller. But that's also the disadvantage. You need one output pin for each bit. So you might need a microcontroller with a higher pin count. Even if are resistors only, you need some of them. And this 2R ratio is not so common. Another disadvantage that I have shown are the peaks on flipping bits. But all in all, I love this converter. Now we can create some crazy sound projects. So if you like to see more, just subscribe and tune in again. Bye!